guys, just a caveat to this video. Um, this is quite a personal video. It's not something I tend to do all the time. However, it's I was inspired to do this by shaving with Chief. Um, if you if you lose anything, what I'm talking about in the video, I'm gonna put a pretty big, um, lengthy uh, write up for this, just to explain kind of what I mean and kind of where it went, where it led from. I hope you guys appreciate this video. I love you all. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I'll catch you later. Hello and welcome to the Virtual Groomer. My name is Jack, your host, and today I'm bringing you another shaving video. This is going to be a slightly different one. Um, this is going to be a discussion about my life, my upbringing, who I am now, what's made me who I am now. This, this video is heavily inspired by a video, Shaving with Chief, or my good friend Corey made a couple of days ago, where he discusses his approach to life, his struggles, him growing up, kind of why he thinks the way he does. That video really touched me. I'm being quite honest with you, to the point of me almost being in tears. It really struck a struck a chord with me that someone was willing to be so frank and honest and show that level of vulnerability. And uh, yeah, that that's inspired me to make a video similar. With that, those caveats out of the way, in fact, I, I do need to caveat something in saying that if you're not up for this sort of content from me, then I would highly recommend that you click off the video and check out my next video or watch someone else's video today. Um, I fully understand if this is not really what you want to get into. Um, yeah, there's, there's going to be some deep stuff in this, so I hope you guys bear with me. Let me show you what I'm using today and then we'll get into it. So all of the things I've picked, well, most of the things I've picked are things that mean quite a lot personally to me. Th some of my favorite stuff, and uh, we're gonna have a, a comfortable shave and a not so comfortable conversation, I think. So this is um, the Noir et Vanille by Noble Otto. This is simply my favorite scent. Um, it's tea forward. It's tea forward with hints of sweetness and strawberry. It's an absolutely lovely scent and it is really one of my favorites. I've used it so many times. I have backup tubs, but I enjoy it so much. So that, that's, that's the soap we're gonna be using today. My razor is my Christopher Bradley razor in stainless steel. This is the first razor I, I got after I joined Carve. Um, we're gonna go into all of that as well. So I love this razor, I'm using that today. I'm using that with a 50th use Wizomet blade and a SBC. Um, and my brush, uh, this is actually just new. I'm trying to break this in a little bit. So we're gonna shave with this. This is a, a Leonidum brush. As you can see, it's absolutely beautiful. Really nice knot here. So that's, that's what we're going to use today. So let's get a load and we'll get to talking. So let's start with, um, let's start with my upbringing and kind of where I was born. So I was born, for anyone that hasn't been to England, I was born in a town in the southwest of England called Bristol. Uh, Bristol, Bristol's an interesting city. It's very multicultural. Another big aspect to Bristol is it's quite wealthy. And I'll go into kind of wealth and stuff like that in a minute, but I did not grow up that way at all. I grew up on a fairly, in a fairly difficult way. And Bristol is a lovely place to live. It's quite expensive. The people of Bristol have their own charm, I would say. If you've ever heard um, kind of like that farmer West Country accent, that's kind of how they all speak. I don't have that accent. I'm not particularly sure why. I never have. But uh, a lot of people do, and a lot of people find it quite charming. Uh, Bristol is, or at least the West Country in itself, is one of the big originators of cider, I believe, or at least one of the biggest proponents of cider. May not may not be originators, but... Um, so yeah, I grew up there. I have two brothers and two sisters. So a family of five. I, I One brother is in a relationship outside of my mother's, so it's my dad's son and my half-brother. I am the youngest of the other four siblings, which leads me into the next part of this. So being the youngest of the four siblings, uh, I had a fairly difficult upbringing in the sense that um, my, my dad and my mum split up fairly early. Um, they split up when I was about two. And it, from my perspective, uh, my mum did some bad stuff to my dad. I'm not going to go into that because that's not my business. 
but my mum didn't do some... My, my, my mum didn't... Wasn't the most considerate of him, is all I'm going to say. And they split up. They weren't married. They split up, and uh, they kind of went their separate ways. And after that, my mum... From my perspective, she got involved with some of the wrong people. And... Developed some pretty dangerous habits. She... Frank, fr frankly, from my perspective, she became a very he heavy alcoholic. Um, she started paying a lot less attention to her children. Fortunately, I had a sister who... I'm not even exaggerating, there was a time in my life where I thought my sister was my mother um, when I was that young, because I didn't... <laughs> I didn't know my mother that well, frankly. Um, this is difficult for me to talk about, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, but... So, my sister, for a long period of my life, was the one that was looking after me. And what that did as a, as a child is it made me, quite frankly, it made me dislike my mother quite a lot. Um, it made me really, the way I always felt like, towards my mum was, how dare you take that away from me? Like, how dare you take this kind of like motherly experience away from me? Because you refused to do it, you didn't want to do it. And a, a lot of that translated to my psyche and who I was as a person for a really long, a long period of my, of my life. So I, I was really, really badly behaved in school. Um, I used to get in trouble a lot. I got excluded, expelled, uh, and a lot of that was related to my home life, but also a lot of that was related to me being quite fiercely bullied as well because See, it's difficult because as a kid, you don't really know what you're doing and food was an afterthought for me because quite honestly, a lot of my, a, a lot of my approach was, you know, I'm a kid, I don't really know how to look after myself. My sister got, my sister left home after some big arguments with my mum and kind of as my sister left home, I was pretty much on my own. Like I didn't really have anyone. My other siblings were all kind of tied up in their own lives and but honestly, they just didn't have time for me. So at that point, I kind of had to learn to fend for myself. My my sister closest to my age has autism, so she couldn't, She she's older than me, but she wasn't so, she wasn't capable of helping me as a child. So it was pretty much me fending for myself. And quite a lot of that, there was quite a lot of resentment that came with that, quite a lot of anger, because I felt as if I'd been given a shitty hand and I had to struggle throughout life because of that. And that translated to kind of just my general attitude. I hated everyone. I was very rebellious. I, I, I refused to let anyone get anything over on me. And quite honestly, it was to my detriment so regularly. Uh, there'd be times in school where I'd feel people were trying to make me feel weak and I would just flip out. Um, I didn't want to seem like you're not, you're not getting one over on me. You're not even going to try and get one over on me. And because of that, I got into some pretty bad trouble. There are a few times where I got into trouble with the police. There are a few times where I just got expelled or excluded from school. And a lot of that, a lot of that guard really made me struggle to lose friends. Um, I mean, to keep or retain friends, rather. F throughout my life, uh, I'm not going to say I lived a lonely life. Because uh, there have been points in my life where I've had good company. But I mean, I mean, quite honestly, I have left, lived quite a lonely a life. Quite a lot of my childhood was me locking myself up inside because of, I think of that level of insecurity and not quite knowing that, or what is to come of my life. I, I don't trust the outside, the outside isn't for me. So I stayed indoors a lot as a kid, playing video games and stuff like that, which my, so at that time, my dad was always around. Not always around, but my dad lived fairly close. I couldn't see him all the time, so he used to do really long shift work. 
And uh, kind of from that then, when I was about 10 years old, now bear in mind that my mother for a very long time was pretty badly neglecting me. Um, I, I wasn't eating properly. I was eating pretty much fast food all the time. Uh, there'd be times where I wouldn't see her for days and I'd have to go looking for her because there was nothing to eat. So I'll give you an example. I'm only giving you an example. I'm not looking for any sympathy here. So I, I was, um, I used to go searching for her about two or three o'clock in the morning. And I used to put our dog on, on a lead or dog leash and just go looking for her. And I was about, about 10 maybe. Um, so I, I'd, I'd go looking for her. I'd eventually find her and she would give me money. She'd give me like three or four pounds. I'm, I'm a kid, I don't know how to cook a meal. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy food. Uh, bad food, not good food. So I could eat for sustenance. So I'd then go buy some bad food. And quite frankly, that's where the weight gain came in. Um, I, I'm a strong believer in your parents being a big role in teaching you that degree of discipline. And I, I had no idea what discipline was, you know? I, all I knew was this is what I'm doing to survive. And I had zero discipline. And it, it, considered, it continued throughout my life with loads of other stuff as well. Like I'd start things and quit because they were difficult. I'd be, Quite honestly, a, a shitty person. Um, it made me dislike everyone. It made me jealous of people and just angry of people that had more than me because I didn't have anything. We grew up pretty poor. My mum used to work in a pub, which is probably the worst atmosphere for someone like that, quite honestly. So so yeah, that's, that's kind of what it was. And I grew up, I went through school. I hated school, so I never went to school. I used to, actually let me, cycle back. So um, when I was about 12, my dad got a phone call. In fact, the school couldn't get through to my mum. And I think at that point, the school started becoming quite concerned, actually, about my upbringing, kind of what was going on. Because I come, I go to school, my clothes wouldn't be washed. Um, I didn't have a backpack. My shoes were broken and they were in awful state. And I remember there was, uh, there was one time when uh, I used to have a learning mentor because I used to struggle quite a lot. And my learning mentor, he, uh, he, he said, Jack, um, I, I, I see your bag is broken and you're, you know, you don't have any shoes. Like, can I, can I buy some for you? And that, that crushed me, honestly, that, that crushed me because I'm not used to people, <laughs> quite honestly at that point, I, I'm not used to people caring for me in that way. And I mean, look, I've got nothing. I, I, I took him up on it, but then he, he called my dad. Um, he couldn't get through to my mum because he wanted to have a discussion about this. He couldn't get through to my mum, so he called my dad. And it's weird because as a child, I didn't know much was wrong. I knew that I had a hard life, but for some reason, my dad just didn't know what I was going through. And at about 12 years old, my dad frankly said to me, now my dad, I'd be nowhere without him. Um, he's helped me so much in my life. My dad basically said to me, okay, it's time you move in. It's time you move out of your mum's and you come and live with me. And quite honestly, this is something I had wanted for years and years. But because of my the way my dad worked, it just wasn't possible, you know? It just wasn't able to happen. And eventually, I moved in with my dad. And life started looking up. My dad gave me that degree of discipline that I missed. There were still parts of my personality that were really rigid and bad, frankly, because I had no prior guidance. So I had quite a lot of really rough edges. Um, I was still fairly misbehaved, quite honestly, he didn't know, because he would have kicked my ass. And uh, kind of from there then, I left school with no grades, no GCSEs, and I went to college. Um, college to then try and get the GCSEs, which I failed again, because I had no discipline. And uh, the, the recession was about, so 
once the global recession happened, I had no job. The jobs that were around, um, I just wasn't appealing for, you know? Like, why, why would anyone employ me? I have no grades, I have nothing, no experience. I've always been quite intelligent. I mean, to, not to toot my own horn, of course, but I've never been a stupid person. But there was just this complete lack of care and application of myself when I was growing up. Because, frankly, I always used to think I have bigger problems to worry about. And I know I'm lathering forever, but we're having a conversation here. I think our lather's good anyway. Yeah, our lather's pretty good. So, there was a complete, like, lack of care. Uh, I left school. I, and then the recession hit. I couldn't find a job. So I was unemployed for two years. And that is probably the hardest period of my life. Because I almost made my bed and I was lying in it. I said I get shaven. I almost made my bed and I was lying in it because I had very few friends. I was lonely. I was overweight. And but honestly, I had developed bad habits, depression, anxiety. And I, I, at that point, I saw no way out of it. Um, I met a woman, I met a girl, her name was Michaela. I met her when I was 16. And I was with Michaela for eight years. Michaela, Fundamentally, is a very good person. But she had personal struggles of her own. And it occurred to me around the time that I decided to just move here. That my life was going nowhere. Prior to moving here. In fact, let me rewind a bit. So the recession ended. I managed to find a job in a game store. I then, I, I think at that point, my, my mental <laughs> facilities kind of turned around. And I, I, I realized very quickly after going through all this hardship that the only way of really achieving anything is getting after it. Like, and that was something I, I lacked throughout all my life because I've never gone after it. Well, honestly, my approach was, I see everyone else getting theirs. When the, why, the, why the fuck haven't I had mine yet? Like, I, I, I've lived this fucking shitty life. This life owes me something. And quite honestly, it took me a long time to realize that no one owes you anything. Even if you get dealt a shitty hand, there's someone that has a shittier hand than you, and they're making the best of their life. I recognize this at about 21. After 21, I started really looking hard for a job. I found a job in retail and I, I was working in retail for a couple of years. And there's this, um, this company, I was unemployed for a few months after all the seasonal work dried up. And this company just took a gamble on me. Uh, martial arts has always been, a, was a big part of my life for many years. And it still is, I still train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So I took my my martial arts instructor at that time, my Japanese jiu-jitsu instructor basically said to me, hey Jack, I have this guy who's willing to give you a shot. It was earning minimum wage, but it was a foot in the door. You know, it was a foot in the door of something that wasn't a a seasonal retail position. It was a, like an admin kind of like, it started off as data entry, but it was an admin position for a company, a manufacturing company, a company that worked with metal, titanium, stainless steel, and I learned a lot working there. They, they specialized in the motorcycle industry. I got some really cool experience working there and I stopped working there. And at that time I was still with Michaela and I noticed there was a thing happening with her and me. She was very stagnant and I was constantly trying to improve myself. She, she worked in a fast food restaurant and refused to kind of advance. I think it was, a lot of it was out of fear. She refused to advance and just didn't want to improve on her standing. And at that point, my, my, my mentality completely switched around. Uh, I, I was hungry. I, I wanted to achieve things. I wanted to improve. And I noticed 
us drifting further and further apart like, all the time. Um, but again, like my, my, my part of my personality is something goes wrong and I'm back to where I started. I, not so much anymore, but when, when I was there and when I was just getting out of that mentality, it was very much like that, like anything that would go wrong. So it was just two people that were unstable, trying to keep a relationship together, frankly, that no, I look back and it just, it just wasn't alive anymore. And we were both unhappy, but doing it because neither of us wanted to be alone. And it took me a few years. I, I changed jobs a few times and then I got a job looking for Microsoft. Um, I had blagged my way through an interview, um, just constantly looking for new opportunities. And I landed a job in Microsoft. I worked there for over a year. And I used that as a stepping stone to get a pretty high ranking position. The, the position was almost like a, a big department lead in an IT company. Earning good money, very good money for my age. And that was out of pure hunger and determination. And when I first started working for Microsoft, I met my current wife. I met her online. And something quickly occurred to me that quite honestly, after I met her and I fell in love with her, the feeling was mutual, of course. It broke me being away from her. Um, and I know that sounds weak of me. Maybe it's not. Tell me what you think. But it broke me being away from her. I, I really struggled with it. I, I lost my ability to sleep. Um, her being here, like constantly seven hours ahead of me. I was going to bed really late. My health started really slipping and I started falling back into depression again. Until I had decided, look, I can't continue doing this. Um, I, before I got seriously involved with Nacy, I basically said to Michaela, look, you can't, can't do this anymore. I've been trying to go, kind of go on for years and it's never worked. And um, I, I split up with Michaela. Um, it was hard for me because it was such a long time. And if you do something for that long, it's normal to you. It took me a long time to adjust until a January here of 2018. And Nacy said to me, so I was with Nacy for a year online. And Nacy said to me, I think it's about time you visit. So I did. And uh, it was time for me to leave, leave America. And I just said to her, like, I can't, like, I, I can't go. Why would I do that? And this is the happiest I've been in years, <laughs> just being here with you. I just accepted a big job. And that was around that time. But something very apparent uh, occurred to me. It's not so much about your status in life. It's about how happy you are with the people you are around you. And don't get me wrong, money helps with some things, but it's never gonna buy you happiness. And I got here, I moved here, I pretty much just dropped everything. I said to my landlord, sell everything. Sell everything in my room. That'll pay for my last month of rent and some for the inconvenience. So I'd moved out long before that, um, long before that. And I moved here. Quite frankly, we struggled really badly at first. Um, financially, like we had no money, nothing, because we did not know when. Honestly, it wasn't well thought out. It's thought out based around emotion, not so much about logic. We struggled for a good year until we could afford my green card. And once I got my green card, things really started turning around. <laughs> um, I got a job working for a quite frankly, 
the employment opportunities out here aren't the best um, in Albuquerque, I'm not gonna lie. However, it gave me something to start earning money and to really find my feet in this country. And then uh, pretty much as soon as I got here, actually a year before that, I got into wet shaving. Um, and this is where this hobby comes in and the importance of what this has done for me. I got into wet shaving and I have a personality to where when I get into something, I really get into something. Like I don't just, I don't just taste it. I eat it up. Like I really, really eat it up. And I, I, I got really consumed by this and that's when you started seeing all the videos. And uh, I decided to go big, to Big Shave Southwest. And um, at Big Shave Southwest, I met Chris Kirchin, who is the owner of Carve Shaving Co. And we hit it off. We became fairly good friends after that. And eventually I, I offered him, let me, let me help the company for free. Uh, it was getting around the time um, where I needed to sign a contract with this crane company and he had seen the good work I've done. Let me go grab a towel. So I'm using this old towel, my Lancaster towels in the wash. So he'd seen this good work I had done. He, ha he has like a, a good amount of idea of what I can do and what I can achieve. So he hired me on full time. Um, no art vanilla, boom. Which leads me to kind of say this. I I've, I've been through some struggle, um, both mentally, physically. I still am going through it physically. I'm trying to lose weight at the moment. It's not easy. Something has, all, has remained true for a long period of my life. And quite honestly, that is one of the biggest things that resonated with me, with Corey's video. It's never finished. Regardless of where you are and your standing in life, you can always turn it around. It just involves work and it involves really putting effort into something. I like to feel that I started with almost nothing. And I've decided to pack up my life in England and move over here and start anew again. And Quite honestly, it's gone better than ever I could imagine. Was it was it easy at first? No, it wasn't easy. Nothing worth doing is easy. I I, I stress this, and I, I, I really stress this. There is huge amounts of growth that can be attained through being vulnerable. You learn things about yourself. You improve as a person. I've been vulnerable a lot of times in my life, and I haven't used those opportunities to grow. Really only now have I noticed that, that that vulnerable state has made me grow as a person and become who I am now. And if I look back on all of these things, would I say that I'd want it done any differently? No, no I wouldn't. Over the past few years, I've forgiven my mother. I've, for, I've forgiven everything that have happened in my life because I really understand the importance of growth and evolution. Growth is a huge part of you as a person and quite frankly, it took me such a long time to understand that. I thought things were eventually just gonna fall into place and things were gonna get handed to me. And quite honestly, that never fucking happened. And I was resentful of the fact that everyone seemed to get theirs and I got nothing. And really now when I look about it, no one gets theirs. Everyone who has something, they work for it. And I'm very much of the opinion that what I have now, I've worked for it. And it's, it makes me proud of myself. And, and guys, honestly, <laughs> I thought I'd have never been proud of myself. And I am. It goes to show that things can turn around, regardless of how shitty a situation you're in, you can always make it better. You pick yourself up, you dust yourself off, and you keep going. Because this is a short life we have, and we have to make the best of it. And don't let anything hold you back, honestly. Whatever you want to do, for sure. I hate to sound corny or cheesy here, but you're worth it. Everyone is worth it. Just understand that you are important, but you need to, you need to fight like fuck and work for it. And eventually that work will pay off, I promise. Because it happened to me, it's happened to loads of people I know. This has been quite a personal video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'll show you what I used and I'll let you guys go. This is the Noir Vanille by Carve Shave & Co. Well, by Noble Otter, sorry, mine is everywhere. I fucking love this scent. If you haven't tried this scent, please, please try it. It's sweet, 
Um, it's very tea forward. It's just an absolutely wonderful experience. Um, my, my favorite by far, Calf Shaving Co, a razor that means a lot to me. I'll never let this go. Love it, love it, love it. Wizomet blade, slowly becoming my favorite blade. My brush was my new Leonidum brush with some really nice tips here. This crazy green hybrid, love it. Post was the matching splash. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video today. If you have anything you want to talk to me about, just talk to me. I'm always here. I, you guys are therapy, therapy for me and I am more than happy to return it back in, back in favor, you know. I appreciate you all. I appreciate you all kind of tuning into these videos and hearing me ramble, hearing my opinion on these products. This has become a huge part of my life and I wouldn't trade it for anything. I wouldn't trade you guys for anything. I know I'm sentimental, I can't help it, but my name is Jack, your host from the Virtual Green Room. Wherever you are in the world, have a fucking wonderful day and goodbye for now.